Yeah, that's right. Yo, what up? Yeah, I'm on two minutes early, baby. <laughs> on two minutes early. Joe's Wolf Coast, what up? Yeah, Michelle, what up? Plastic Coffins, what's going on? Fahad, I see you. Matt, what's going on? Frankie Frank, what up, man? I liked your video that you put up, Frank. I miss I miss those stages, too. Delvino, what up? Sir Carl, what's going on? I see you fire back at you. Um, I decided to start coming on uh, a, a little bit early to make sure. Last week, there was technical difficulties up top, so we wanted to make sure. Oh, thanks, man. Thanks, Joel. Uh, Sebastian, we had, we had a blast. I had a blast catching up um, with Sebastian last week, so, uh, so I'm glad... Yeah, tuned in. And this you missed last week. Um, don't work here. It's it's up on my page. Um, you can still watch it. RG Fent, what up? Uh, uh Dana, what's up? Stacy Lafay, what up? What up? I'm waving to everybody. I said, let me come on a couple minutes. Hugh Mizzle, what's up, sir? You know, you know, I've mentioned uh, the messenger part, right? <laughs> I got to. I got to. Royce, I see you. Uh, we have some uh, some of my faves uh, coming in. Dion, what up, fam? Um, you know what we didn't mention, Dion? Make sure y'all check out Dion Cole. He's spinning music every Sunday, uh, Sunday afternoon. So you make sure you wanna, uh, you know, go check him out spinning, spinning some of the, spinning some of the hottest tunes on the planet right there. I don't know why DJs always do that. <laughs> why do DJs always project their voice like this? <laughs> Yo, man, Hugh posted. He sent me something with uh, it wasn't Grandmaster. It was Grandmaster Flash. But it wasn't Melly Mel, and Creole was, was trying to sound like he, uh, he was try, he was trying to ch trying to channel Grandmaster Melly Mel. Dip, I see you. Ah, there he is, Jason Andors. What's up, man? Um, Cream Ray, what's going on? I tagged you and Patrice uh, B Day. Oh, thanks, man. Mimi G, what up? Um, oh, you know what? Happy birthday to my man Artie Fuqua. Um, good friend, hand on the pop. What's going on, Angie? What up? Um, yeah, yeah, it was, uh, it was, <laughs> if y'all, if y'all didn't see it, go to my page afterwards, uh, Artie Fuqua, so I, I said it recently, I just discovered that, um, all of the old, or majority of the old episodes of Showtime at the Apollo, um, were available on, uh, I think it's called Tubi, right, and so I found, so Artie Fuqua used to go by the name Sonny Slim, why oops screwed it up um but it's, it's funny i didn't say whether or not he he lasted or if he got booed um because it's not my place to do that um you'll have to go find that episode for yourselves i did send audi the uh the episode or the the clip from that episode though um, so, so you can catch that. We, we have, um, a, a, a good friend, special guest on. They're all special guests. I say that every week, but they, they, you know, they're, they're, they're very, very talented individuals. Um, for 30 seconds, I can't cause I'm waiting for my man to come on. So I can't, I can't go live with everybody when I, when I have somebody coming on, I don't want to, uh, disrespect them. Uh, you you know I'm a fan. How about 30 seconds? I appreciate you're not a fanatic. You are fam. Everybody that comes through is fam, and I appreciate y'all. Real Megan, what up? Nah, Faison is special. <laughs> I'll let you say it. I'll let you tell him that. Um, and you know what? Somebody said it's Faison time. Um, Faison actually, he actually, he hit me about an hour ago. See, I, I take a little nap before I do these because cause, uh, between Tony Roberts, Tony Roberts, J.B. Smooth, and, and Tony Rock, them cats went, went late. We went like three hours. So I take a little nap, a little nappy nap before I do these. And, uh, and my nap was interrupted. Faison hit me. He's like, yo. I said, what up? He's, he's, like, he's like, yo, what time are we going? I said, it's. Is is 8 p.m. your time because he's on the West Coast. Andre Comedian, what up, Andre? I saw you uh so popped in your live a little earlier today, man, right before I took a nap. Um so Faison, Faison is is uh is on on a route. I, I could have texted. Yeah, you know the three hour joints are fun, but um but a brother wakes up, um <laughs> I'm a groupie. <laughs> 
Manny man, what up, Manny? What's going on, fam? I miss, I miss work train fright. Uh, but I've been we've been out um every every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday in the park getting it in with, with the heavy rope, son. And if if any of y'all have never had the uh had the pleasure of working out and jumping rope with weighted ropes, try it. There he is, Faison. Send me that request. He's here. Um, see, I told y'all, I told y'all he'd be here shortly. And look, there he is. Uh, <laughs> Global Free says I'm a member. Yeah, we, we work at the park, uh, masks, masks, masks on, masks on. Let me see if I, if I can, uh, I guess I can send it too. It's, it's just, it's, uh, let's, let's just say, well, where is it? I'm looking, I'm scrolling down. I'm. There. It says phase on and unable to join. Do do it again. Do do it. Do it again. Derek Gonzalez, what up? I don't know why. That's always weird when it says unable to join. Um, yeah, phase on all time. These, you know, most most of the people. Actually, everybody that comes on is professional. We we always clown Tony Woods, but Tony Woods, Tony Woods is is Tony Woods. Tony. Tony Woods gonna do it when Tony Woods is ready to do it, shorty. You know, so oh damn. Um same shirt every week. Now nah, I change colors. I, I have I have I have three different flavors. Um Dean, if he can't join, I'll come in and make history. <laughs> I appreciate your persistence, Global Freeze. I do appreciate uh that. I like the lilac myself too. Um these these were all Part of the the Dean Edwards on tour collection, but since uh, I'd like to say hello, I'm across the pond in Man Manchester. Mike T. Comedy, cheers, brethren, cheers, bruv. Appreciate it. Um, don't know why uh, suddenly start speaking like Idris Elba. Um, I guess I have to squint as well. Um, if you're going to channel Idris, then you want to really make sure that you um that you squint because squinting means you're sexy and possibly uh. Possibly a people's sexiest man alive looking right there. <laughs> but phase I yeah, send me send me that uh send me that request one more again. Um because I think I think I think you're on here. Um and that's that's why yeah, Global Freeze, Mike T Comedy, Matthew, hey, y'all have sent requests. Um Brody the Joker in the building. I see the, the Union Jacks up there. Idris Edwards, yeah. Dean, we need to see you more throughout the week. There he goes. All right. Here we go. All right, Faison. Here we go. He's coming in. He's waiting for Faison. Love. Terrible impression. Haters. Haters. Don't need no hateration or holleration. <laughs> oh, shit. What up, say? What up, man? <laughs> it's all fucked up. Chillin', look. Hold up. I'm a... I'm gonna I'm gonna do this whole thing oh, like this. Okay. <laughs> there we go. Oh shoot. Faye Zizzle, what up, fam? There we go. What look, up, man? I, I, look, I, I don't have I don't have a uh I don't have a Colombian, but I got a chapstick. <laughs> so we equal. <laughs> What's up, brother? How you been, man? How you doing, man? I'm chilling, chilling, man. Good, to, good to see you. Good to have you, there you go, have there you there. on here. Thank you, thank you for your punctuality and and actually being early because I was telling them that you got on. You hit me about an hour and a half ago, and <laughs> I, and no, and I appreciate that. Yo, there, there, there have been a couple people that that you know we always lean on on on, on Tony on Tony Woods. Oh yeah, because Tony Woods, you know Tony Tony ain't no, and so Tony. <laughs> Tony shows up when Tony he's, Woods going to show up. He's one of those brilliant dudes, man. He ain't got time is irrelevant. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> the space time continuum is is different for Tony Woods. Right, he's irrelevant. <laughs> he, he, but he listen, let me let me give you your your proper introductions, and for anybody that uh, has never been on here before, the people that follow you and are new to me, this is your man Dean Edwards. Welcome to another another weekly episode of Fun Market Protocol Live, a live uh, podcast I do every Monday night on IG Live. I'm just so the oldest motherfucker. What do you say? I said I'm just gonna have to hold this motherfucker. I'm a, you see okay. me fidgeting with it like, yeah. yeah. I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna send you a tripod and a ring light. I got this shit. <laughs> Usually you're to supposed to on the, slide on the in big this thing, but trust me, I'm I'm a all good, all good, man. Well, listen, um, I'm I have old, some man. of my favorite <laughs> my favorite comics on here every Monday. 
And this week is no different. My my guest tonight, um, numerous classic movies, only almost movies and TV shows too many to mention. Um, you know, Uptown Comedy Club, Comic Justice with AJ Jamal. <laughs> Damn, um, I, um, how'd you pull that one out? God, I yeah, no, I remember, that one. Listen, let me tell you something. God, damn. We friends, but I'm I'm a fan, man. I'm like I appreciate everybody's full body of work. Taking it back to Bebe's kids, Damn. Uh, uh, Media Man. Wow! Don't be a menace to South Central. Friday, uh, the Players Club, uh, the Parenthood, the Big House, which still to this day the funniest line, one of my favorite lines that me and Rich still quote is is, is you, you said, "Oh my Christ." <laughs> Uh, Maid, Elf, oh, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and Couples Retreat, um, yeah. and so many other uh, wonderful films. My man and yours, Faison Love, in the building. You stupid. <laughs> you are crazy. How you doing? Thank you, bro. <laughs> I'm I'm cool, man. I'm cool. How, how have you been? You know, for starters, how have you been through this whole, this whole corona quarantine for the last nine months, man? Um, I actually needed it because we was moving so fast, and then um, I got it earlier. I got it early. You got the COVID. Yeah, I got it early. So somebody gave it to me. Oh wow! And um, <laughs> somehow, <laughs> yeah, I got it early, and then I got it um, f um March sixth, and I had it till um April eighteenth. Damn. Yeah. You had that early five, six week joint. Yeah, I had the real one. These ones people call me like I think that you know, you don't you don't need a test if you got it. If right. You, if you got it, yeah. When when you when you got it, did you because it was so new mm -hmm. at that point, did you have a sense that you had contracted it? Or did you just think it was, you maybe had a cold that I, I, thought, I, had, I, I thought I had The flu or something, but right? I, I couldn't breathe. And that's why I was like, "Damn, this is." But I smoked cigars. I'm like, "Maybe my, I, be, I, I better stop smoking cigars." Right, right, right. So, um, but I couldn't breathe, and um, I called my doctor, uh, uh, Doctor Blake in Atlanta, and he he was like, D -d -d "Try this and try this." And between him and my mom, man, whoo, they, 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 they really picked me up. Oh, that's good. I didn't go Bless to the you, hospital. Man. I was like, fuck that. Yeah. You, you recuperated at home? Hell yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. Because. Well, what did Richard Price say? Because the hospital ain't nowhere to get well. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't no way to get well. Hell no. Well, dude, I'm I'm glad. I'm glad. I didn't I didn't know. I didn't know that. Uh, that bad. Me and Scarface had it together. We were on uh, your clubhouse. Yeah. We were on there talking about it yesterday. I don't know how we both had it same time, and we was wow dugging through that shit, man. Yeah, I saw when 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 Face had it. I remember seeing for for me because it was still. It was still so, so so foreign, and and you know you heard all the conspiracy theories and everything, and seeing someone that we hold with such high esteem, Scarface, um, so just barren, and him just saying, "Yo, man, this I, I don't wish wish uh, this for my worst enemy." We would talk like that every day. Dig it, dig it. We basically saying who was alive, and we you alive, you alive, all right, man. <laughs> Yeah, this is fucked up. Yeah, it's fucked up. Yeah, yeah. I, the thing was sherbet ice cream. We ate sherbet ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> it's always that sherbet, man. Sherbet was the only thing that would just go down. Because you couldn't, there was no taste. Right. Yeah. There was no taste. Did you... Did you was there was there any point you know to get serious was there any point in there where you were fearful and you said yo this this could be this could be it or did you did you know you were gonna pull through? I knew I was gonna pull through, but it was close. Like, what the fuck is? I mean, because going to the bathroom was a problem. Really? 
getting up strength. I see these people that say they got COVID, and so I see them walking around because they ain't got no goddamn COVID. Because you can't right. go around and do shit. You, you, all your energy is placed on getting up. You're you're aching so much. You, uh, you get up and yeah, walk. <clears throat> it's fucked up to get back to that couch, that bed where yeah. you was at. Yeah. Ah, it's like a nut. Like ah. Ah, sit down was like busting a nut. Ah, 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 ah. All you were literally doing was sit down. When you thought about it, like I gotta go. Shit, fuck. Right, right. You get mad that you have a movement. Yo, you gotta get up. Your bones is going, all right, nigga. Okay, nigga. All right, nigga. We're going to try to help you now. We're going to try to help you now. And I'm walking to the toilet. and Here we go. Two feet now. Two feet now. We're two feet. <laughs> sit on down. But sometimes you will sit down before you hit the toilet. You know how you miss the Ah, shit. You're on the side of the toilet. Shit. <coughs> ah, damn. I'm like, what's wrong? I'm nothing. <laughs> One time, I was in the bathroom. It had to be five hours. <laughs> I fell asleep. COVID, so I was too tired to get up. So I said, I'm just going to sit here for a minute. Woke up, could not move legs. Um, legs is... <laughs> so I'm like, what the fuck? And you don't want to call your mom, mom. <laughs> Come get, I'm done. <laughs> I ain't coming in there. I yo, Samir. Ah. <laughs> so you, I'm on the towel rack trying to get up. <laughs> you try to rock. Ah. And I'm thinking, we ain't supposed to touch these towels. Fuck these towels. Man, trust me. I see those people that say they have COVID. Say like, you ain't got it. <laughs> you can't do shit. You can't move. You can't taste. I remember I, yes, yes. I kept telling my mom, I'm not hungry. I'm not hungry. She said, you haven't eaten in a week. I said, I'm not hungry. My mother can cook. <laughs> yeah, but that's, that's that. You know what? I didn't know. I didn't know you were Cuban, son. Well, half. <laughs> yeah. No, but still, when I saw, I was like, but then I, that I, when I saw your full name, I was like, oh, oh. Oh. that's where Faison comes from. <laughs> that's why he doesn't <laughs> only want them. I never, I never, you know, because I, I like to do some form of a. Uh, uh, of research, so I'm not just coming on here. I'm very impressed because you went back to comic justice with AJ. But, well, you, you know what, AJ AJ Jamal doesn't get his his. I mean, there's so many comics that don't get their I'm just due. Blazing, this nigga was blazing. Yeah, dude. Easy. Yeah. Heater, heater. Like, yeah. like me, and, yo. Me, me and Godfrey, um, we always like we talk about comics that. People sleep on AJ Jamal's one. People think, and th people think because like AJ Jamal, or even Sinbad, and and um, you know, shout out to Sinbad. I heard he's uh, he's yeah. he's uh, healing now, which is yeah. great to hear. Yeah. But I think people believe because someone works works less blue and or works clean that that they soft. I'm like, nah, dude. Them them dudes bring bring bringing some fire. Do you understand? I, I said I was gonna go clean, and um, it was, it was, and it wasn't. But it was the hardest set ever yeah. for me. And this was like three years ago. I said, you know, I'm I'm trying to set clean. Let's see. Mm -hmm. What I mean it was hard because you have to watch what you say, and um, my brain is not trained to do that. Right. Right. You know, right. once you train your brain to go around that, you know, um, 
Because if you talk to Bill Cosby, you're like, oh, he's he's brilliant. This is oh, this that's just his act. Oh, whoa! Yeah. This is big faces gonna talk to you about the real shit. <laughs> no, yes, dude. We we saw me, Rich. Shout out to Rich Pierre Louis. Me, Rich, Hugh, and our boy Rob. Hugh. This had to be probably you guys, 2012. I remember Hugh came up with that name. Oh, yo, face. I'm humor. I'm like, you're milked, nigga. <laughs> you are milked and chilling. Your face don't say my real name. <laughs> me and Milk, <laughs> me and Milk was um, walking messengers in Manhattan. Yeah, he t yo, he texted me early. He was like, yo, yo, we were messengers together. <laughs> That, he just popped up. I love that nigga, man. We yo, yo. yo, Hugh is the best, man. Yo, face. I remember when he first had his first hit. Yo, face. You ought to have a child. I was like, that's right. Milk is a father. Yeah. I'm a father. <laughs> Loved his baby girl. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I know what he, I know what he means now. That's why I had a daughter, so. I know. It's yeah, I saw. It. She's a uh, beautiful, beautiful man. Thank you. Beautiful, you really can't see beautiful it. little one. Um, um, big worm is fertile. <laughs> At fifty-two, <laughs> he's, he's still he's still shooting them. Big sperm made you look so so. Take take <laughs> me back, man. Where where um where was your first time on stage, and what made you get on stage that first time? Uh, it was a comedy store in La Jolla. Okay. And um, I had this whole plan that um, when I turned, um, I got back from New York and I saw Eddie Murphy on this thing called Young Comics on mm -hmm. on um, HBO. Okay. When I got back to California, I was like, that's what the fuck I'm doing. So I told my buddy Earl, Earl Hampton, what's up, E? He's so fizzle. Buddy E, I was like, yeah, I know what I'm going to do. <laughs> so I'm going to be a stand-up comic. Because we used to write, you know, Earl had a typewriter for the, I don't know why. As a kid, I was always fascinated with typewriters. Like, uh, how they worked. And I was, I was like, I'm going to type up something. It would take me months to type up a line. <laughs> and he would just get on that. I'm like, damn, how do you do that? It's brilliant. So anyway, we would type up jokes, and I would go to school and bag on people. You know, you, people don't want to. Uh, I, I would just bag on people. Um, so uh, we found. Um, I think it was our friend named Pat. Pat found the comedy store in La Jolla, San Diego, and she said, "There's a, a place that you can do stand up." At. I said, "Really." So we called, and they said they had this thing called Potluck. We went down there, and I was 14. About 14. Um, they said, yeah, you can't come in. You got to wait outside, and then we will call you in. Mm. And um, I did that for about six months until Polly Shore showed up. Mm -hmm. When Polly Shore showed up, he was my age, but he was driving a fucking Corvette. His mother owned the club. He was like, <laughs> Right. He's like, dude, what are you doing waiting out here, bro? Come on inside, man. I was like, what? I'm only poor. He's me, too. I was like, how does my fucking 14 driving a fucking Corvette? What the fuck is this? We, he's, you know, you just didn't go by the liquor. and You just did your shit and sat down. It was like, you know, everybody knew I was cool. So I got to sit down in the, in the club, do my shit and sit down. And that's where I created so many relations, man. Uh, Mark. Kurt, I mean, Mark Brazil, who's a good friend of mine, Sam Kennison, uh, mm. um, Carl LeBeau. Carl LeBeau, wow. Um, yeah, he was a part of Sam Kennison's crew. Of the, yeah, I remember. Yeah. Um, Alan, um, oh, man, there were so many people. First time I ever seen Damon Wayne's on stage, I was in amazement. That's when Damon had hair. Um, <laughs> he had the little peninsula. Yeah, he, he had to like take a bit of let it go. <laughs> but he was killing it. I mean, killing it. 
I was like, there's somebody as funny as Eddie Murphy. I was like, there's somebody as funny as Eddie Murphy. What the fuck is that? Like, what the fuck is this nigga? He was killing it. He was doing a mo money, mo money, mo money. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, he was, he was killing it, right? And um, this is the kind of people we came up around. So you you got to study comedy. Like right, the right. right, the right way to do it. And then I left um, California and went to, back to New York. And um, <laughs> it was a whole different, it was only Catch Ride the Star, Stand Up um, New York. Oh, no, I'm not, sorry, not Stand Up New York. Comic Strip, um, Dangerfields, and um, there was one other catch. Um, what the fuck are there? Was seventy seven catch us or of the in the in the in the village was the cellar, cellar. Which Bob? Did you know Barbara who ran that uh, back then? Nah, nah, nah. I came later. Um, oh, so online at comic strip every Friday you had to pick pick a number, right? The lottery. And um, so it'd be me, Maceo. <laughs> um uh what's his, oh god damn it uh, Reggie 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 McFadden Reggie McFadden he came a little later but he was definitely there right. uh Reggie um what's the white boy's name um what is guitar I was like why does he have a fucking guitar um he's a big movie star now um Oh. oh, Sandler. Yes, Adam Sandler will be there with his guitar. Yeah. <laughs> Why do you have a guitar? What the fuck? Oh, Mark Overton, you just said? Oh, Mark will be down there with me. <laughs> Mark, <Right>. over there. <laughs> Mark Overton will be there. Me, me, you know, Mark's my brother, so we, we get on the train. Mark would get off from Chemical. Mark worked at Chemical. Oh, wow. And we uh, would take the train. Hugh would get on at 125th Street. And me and Hugh, Hugh would change tapes. Like, you know, we would uh, barter tapes. Like, we'd have, um, you know, I think I, one time I, I got all his um, uh, James Brown tapes. Mm -hmm. And then he got my, um, I forgot what he was. I think it was either Ice Cube or... Um, I forgot what it was, but I remember getting his James Brown tape. I listened, and I was like, "Damn, this James Brown was." To listen to James Brown with headphones, getting it, it was was amazing. But anyway, that was Third World, and then Rich. Um, <laughs> um, um, who else was on the line back there? Um, so we would get online, and then um, you pick, and then Lucian, God rest his soul. Would tell you how bad you sucked and how you, <laughs> you're not funny. <laughs> and say, look, and say it while condescending to you. You know, you're, you're, you're funny, you, but I already have. I already have a black. I already have a black. Chris Rock was made at the time. He would come in, and rip the motherfucker up. Um, I um, yeah, Chris. I learned a lot from watching Chris Rock. Back then, um, this is poison. His, 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 how confident he was, because um, we were all the same age, right, right. And um, because he got a Cadillac, I was like, this nigga ball. He, 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 <laughs> he got like, this nigga got a Cadillac. What the fuck? Um, you know what's funny? I love how on the West Coast, Paulie Shore was fourteen and had whatever poison, and and Chrissy had the Cadillac. That's how I remember York. shit. I remember Chris Carter right. was like, see, that a Cadillac, what the fuck? Throw some D's on that bitch. Um, um, it was another club around there on 77. I can't remember. I remember opening up Stand Up New York. Stand Up New York? No, that was on the west side. Oh, on the east side, you say? Yeah, I, um, I remember opening up Stand Up New York. Mm -hmm. It was a brand new club with... Um, um, Seinfeld. Oh, dig it. So it was me, Seinfeld, 
and, I, and the host was the guy from Comic Strip. Um, you know him. And um, um, the one. Wally Collins? Huh? Was it Wally? Wally Collins? It was, was it Wally Collins? No, it was, um, what's the brother's name? White guy always was the host at the uh, comic uh, strip. Vic Henley? Tall, skinny. No, no, no. Vic, Vic wasn't tall. It was me, him, Seinfeld, and the guy that had to joke about people would always call him the move, help him be a mover. Oh, that's like five comics now. Right. But he was he was the only guy. Oh, that's the moving joke guy. You always tell somebody about a joke. Oh, yeah, you know the joke before their name. Oh, yeah, it's a moving right, joke. Right, Mike Sweeney. Mike Sweeney, yes. Yes. That's, thank you, Hugh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hugh's Sweeney. filling in the blanks. I love that Hugh's yeah. filling in the blanks. He was there. He was there, right. man. We was the third rail. So um, I remember in order to to get a spot at the cellar, there was another club down there. I forgot. He, what was the lady's name? Her name was Barbara some, something. We had, I had to um, um, showcase at this open, I think he was there. Fair. And that's the first time I met um, 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 Lance Crothers. Lance Crothers. And I'm talking about after I saw Lance Crowthers, I was like, this is the funniest nigga in America. Yo, Crowther was y'all. No, Crowther. literally. We were outside yeah. <laughs> some bullshit fair. Uh -huh. And um I went up, did my shit, and I was just I was just happy to you know motherfuckers didn't throw eggs at me. But he right. was like he was like, No man, that was funny. I mean he, he he's so gracious. No man, that was really funny, man. That was really yeah. funny. And I'm like, because he got the braids and all that shit. Did he get yeah, up? Yeah, he had the look. Lance had the good hair. This nigga went up there, and I said, I was looking at him like this. This nigga is fucking brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, no. I think, I'm, I'm not sure. Either Mark was with me or Hugh. I think, I think it was Mark. It was, it, I was like, this shit is. He had this joke about his, his living in Chicago, and his father said, "Boy, if you don't get if you don't get out there and whoop those boys' ass, you have to fight me." Stop <laughs> Stop it. He said, "I'm sorry, Dad. Stop it. It's my dad's ass." <laughs> yeah, but it was the way he did it. He, he was he was brilliant. Man. I love you. <laughs> yes, I, I remember you. that. I used to love Prowler, man. Oh. Oh my god. He had that joke. And he had the joke. You know a joke I like where he was like he talked about uh like sper sperm. He was like, I was weaving, I was weaving. <laughs> he, excuse me. So many brilliant brothers and um yeah. so many. Um and then later on they opened up, you know, um Mark turned me on to the uptown. Right, right. That came later because before the Uptown, um, there was no, it was either you stand on those lines. I'm like, fuck these lines. What the fuck's up with right. these lines? And, um, right. uh, but, you know, uh, I remember one of the first places of me getting accepted was Dangerfields. Mm -hmm. And that's so funny because, um, uh, Seinfeld would do the one thirty spot or mm -hmm. one o'clock spot, and my spot was like twelve forty-five. And um, so they put you on earlier yeah, than Seinfeld. Yeah, Seinfeld. I mean, uh, and um, Davidson was. Like, let's see how the kid. Let's see the kid. Right? It was. It was like the mob. Yeah, the whole place was like, "Hey, kid, come here. Oh, you want to see? You want some meat? Okay." They would give you a, a voucher to eat at the Tony Romans. <laughs> <laughs> Don't eat here, nigga. Don't eat here. <laughs> yeah. Take the take your business down downstream. Right? Good good jokes. Good and, jokes. And 
And Dangerfields just uh, the 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 quarantine just hit Dangerfields where they had to they finally had to shut down shop, unfortunately. Oh, they, uh, oh, they, um, I thought all the com. You mean they? Well, they all the clubs are closed, but but Dangerfields is they said they're closed for good. They might they might move to a different location. Wow. Yeah, yeah, man. That 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 won't hurt. Wow. That sucks. Yeah, because that's the you know that's the oldest uh I think they said that's the oldest uh comedy club in the city. Oh man, like I said, that's the first you know um time I got paid there and um we got a spot. Like I, they saw me and like, hey go hey, right, come Come back here. This is for these guys. Funny. Um, how how much? Did, what was your back then like? And it was probably a big deal to you. But how much did they pay? You? Twenty bucks. Like 20, 15? Twenty bucks. Twenty bucks. Yeah. Yeah. And I was. But but it it was a big deal. It was, hey, it was cab. It was it was. I didn't, I didn't take the cab. I took the train. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, we balling. We want to get a hot dog, nigga. We gonna get a coke. We gonna be. <laughs> Because I had to borrow twenty dollars from Mark to get down there. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was a lot of fun, man. It was um, yeah, man. It, it, it sounds like it's. It was, when, when would you say was your first real? Um, was was Def Jam and Comic Justice were those your first opportunities, like Hollywood opportunities? No, uh, I had did Baby's Kid when Def Jam was out before Baby's Kid. Oh, did you do? You're right. Yeah, you're right. Dev so, so you know what? Take me, take me there, cause, cause as just as this, I think that was probably a year or two before I started, and I remember seeing you on um on Entertainment Tonight. They interviewed you because you were you were um voicing over wow. Robin Harris's character, and I was always curious how how did they find you uh, or learn was 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 Robin Harris something that you did an impression of on stage? I. Uh, you know, Robin was like our big brother. So, yeah. um, and, you know, he, he was the MC too. So he would, if you get on stage, you go to Robin. He he puts you up when you want to. So, right. well, fuck with him. Like, what the fuck are you going to put him up, the black nigga? <laughs> he's like, he's like, never, you motherfucker. You ain't funny. <laughs> but he would, you know, he put me up. But that's how I started doing it. Right. And then um, when he passed, it was just like, you know, like, a, it's just like, when they passed, it was, it was weird to me. Like, I, I, it was just, I just did it recently, you know, uh, Tiny Pass, and, you know, you got to just sit down and go, um, did we have a great time together while they were alive? Drepercies or anything, um, you know. But yeah, we. Is, you know, last time I saw him, I didn't think I was gonna not never see him. Same thing with Robin, you know. So I start put. I put that in my act, um, almost like a tribute to Robin. And right. It was getting around. Like I, I did it. You know, I did it everywhere. Like um, I said, um, I forgot how I got into it. I just said Robin was here. He said, "None of you motherfuckers was funny." <laughs> you know, and the crowd would go crazy. And then, um, uh, please forgive me, I forgot the woman who, from Reggie Hudlin, she said, we're doing a movie called, um, I was in Atlanta doing it, and she said, we're doing a movie called um, Baby Kids, and we need somebody to play Robin Harris. They were going to have Rich Little play Robin Harris. Oh, 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 oh. what? <laughs> Yeah. That's how he. Hey, we got a guy. We got a guy. Rich, do the thing you do with your with your lips. Huh? <laughs> you know that mother, that mother, and no disrespect to Rich, Rich, Rich Little, who's an amazing impressionist, but nah, nah, son. Do you black <laughs> boys, Rich? <laughs> so, so she heard me and was like, "No, you got to do it." And walked me through the whole thing. She called uh, Reggie and um, Warrington, um, Warrington, Hudlin. Um, I think his wife is the secretary. That's her. <laughs> uh, on um, 
on the on a speakerphone, and they were at Paramount. And she says, "Do the voice." I said, "Oh, what you want me to say?" That's too baby. They went, "Ah." Uh-huh. You understand? Know Reggie and Warren put Robert in, in the first um, leading role in the film. House, uh, what what movie? House Party. Oh damn. <laughs> I'm tripping. No, you know what? You said you said leading role, but I took it back to when he was in uh, Harlem Nights. So I was like, I so I combined Harlem Nights and Boomerang, and, and totally forgot about it. Well, well Spike put him in um, Do the Right Thing, and, and yeah, as as but this was Willie. him leading. This was him. Yeah, number one on the call sheet. Right, right, right. So, um, nice. um. So it was magical, man. That's why, you know, there are no mistakes. You know, I'll tell people we were talking. Stevie Wonder has a song. Everybody, they mislead the song. They think the song is one thing, but it has a it has a whole different meaning. It's a song called "As A S." Oh, I love "As." But what do you think the song is about? Uh, dun, 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 dun. Look, I'm, I have to hear the lick. That's the part people hear, which is brilliant. But the song is telling you you are where you're supposed to That's part of the song. You are where you're supposed to be, no matter mm-hmm. what you think. And it all will work out. Right. And as your maker, I will never send you to hell. Yeah. I mean, I know it sounds, if you listen to it, I will never send you to yeah, hell. Yeah, it does. It, 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 it makes perfect sense. It says, I will stop loving you when eight times eight is four. Right. So with that equation, right. <laughs> when eight times eight equals four, that's when God will stop loving you and send you to hell. So God will yeah. never stop. But the song is, Everything is as it's supposed to be. Right, right. You know, and my, the- my favorite line, my favorite line, look, I just got goosebumps. My favorite line in this song is after he goes through vari- so many variations, and now ain't that loving you? Right, right, That's the- right. Cold is right, line. right. Ain't that look- loving you? Yeah. If you listen to the song, yeah. and that part right there, if you really listen to the song yeah. right there, that, that part is singing through the roof. Because he's saying, now, yeah. that's loving you. Yeah. Ain't nobody sending you to hell, son. You you, you, right. you, you rolled it. You went through that because you were supposed to go through that. Right, right. So I tell people, ain't no mistakes. Right. You know, I had to deal with that with um, every time somebody passed, like, damn. No matter they, no matter what they say, they're gonna say the same thing. Mm. Uh, you know, went too soon. <sighs> supposed to go when they're supposed to go. It was written. Right. right. <laughs> it was written on your right, forehead. Right. Real talk. Real so, talk. You know, we we say that. I, I believe. I always believe that. We we say that because mm-hmm. we're in mourning, and and we're and in that's, mourning. That's where the the that's where the contradiction of of actual faith comes in because if you have faith and you believe that there's there's something on the other side and, and you you transcend the physical form and go to your true form, then you you shouldn't mourn. Like I, I always tell people, I'm like, I'm mm-hmm. don't don't mourn me, celebrate me. The reason why we mourn is because we think it who's next? <laughs> no, we let everybody's like <laughs> ah, who's next, nigga? Who's next? That's why I was just talking to this <laughs> But <laughs> it's supposed to be. Exactly. Exactly. Everything it is as it's supposed to. It's, it's cold as it, but one thing, um, He says, um, you were moving on since the beginning. 
Ain't that something? And times know, and the and time know exactly when the ch I'm, I'm fucking it up, but it's mm -hmm. so cold. The CB One is just the coldest writer ever. Yeah, man. And he put a cold in that song, so when you really listen to it, you're like, oh, this, yeah. this is a man talking to God, and then God is telling yeah. man, I'm not sending you to hell, nigga. Right. I, I created you. Right. Now, ain't that loving you? Right. So there are no mistakes. I don't know why I got no, on this no. tangent. There are no mistakes. Everything right. as is supposed to be. Right, right. Even what we think is, it's for, you know, I don't, you know, except for COVID. No, for <laughs> and you know what? Because that was your friend. Rest in peace to uh, Tiny Wisdom, man. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, so I, I, what, 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 because I knew you were coming on here, and, and I saw that I was like, oh man, that's uh, cause, cause we we hold people, we see them as two dimensional uh, characters, you know. But but these are people that you actually broke bread. That's why I saw. You know, he was at my house uh, a Christmas, two Christmas ago. Was it two? Digging. Wow. So I have a picture. The picture on my Instagram is him at we him DJ Quick. G1, mm -hmm. my mom, my ex-wife, it was just a bunch of us there because I told them I could cook the turkey and um, <laughs> I cooked the turkey and they were like, they didn't know I could cook the turkey. I could cook the turkey real good. Um, I got a sequel to it. So um, they was, you know, everybody was there like, let's see this nigga cook this turkey. But um, we just had a, a ball. That's why I say uh, everybody you love and Niggas, even you hate, just you know, enjoy them now. Yeah. Before Tiny, there was a girl named Nellie Giselle. Who, yeah, yeah. I, I, uh, from uh, from it, was she with, on on the Parenthood? Which no, was she what? <laughs> I've never told this story. Uh, and I would because from what I understand, you actually she. I know she told the story about. You helped her get on, so elaborate. She likes to say, Natalie was a star when you met her. Mm -hmm. Okay? <clears throat> um, right, from BAPS. People know. Well, no, that's the movie. I, um, she, she, she likes to credit me with saying I put her in BAPS, but no. What happened was Angela Means was doing a workshop and she was directing her actors in her workshop. He's mm -hmm. like, Faison, come down here and check them. You know, I was like, oh, okay, let me go down there. Um, but I was really just checking for actresses. <laughs> Keep them on it. <laughs> like, hey, it is. Let me go see. And Robert Townsend told me that um, Troy Bear wrote this movie called Baps. And he wanted me to be in it. And um, they were looking for some girls to play my girlfriend. And um, I was actually going to just, you know, just uh, that was in the back of my mind. And um, Angela was basically who I was going to pitch to him. I'm, she never knew this. So, but she's too, she was just too pretty. Mm -hmm. She just, oh, she's tall and pretty. Everybody going to be like, yeah. But Angela's is goofy too. But I was like, I don't know. If she, right, gonna, right. she had just did the thing with Friday. I don't know if she's going to do that. <clears throat> and this girl had to be a glam, glam, glam girl. So anyway, I go see this play and Natalie comes on and go, I'm like, God damn this girl funny. I remember lit up. I remember going, "Oh!" I was just amazed, like, "Whoa!" And they hear me in the back going, "Oh, oh, oh!" She doesn't know I'm there. I leave and said, "I said, uh, I told Miss Angela, I said, man, who who was that girl? Oh, that's Natalie, blah 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 blah.'" I said, "Tell her she's funny." Then I go to I go, Robert, I said, I got your girl. He goes, who? It says, you don't know her, but he says, who is she? He's like, man, I ain't going to approve her. 
I said, Angela, tell Natalie to come over to my place. <laughs> I got her. I get her number. He said, I, I, you, you, you trying to fuck? I said, no, I want to fuck your cousin. <laughs> <laughs> her, her cousin was fine as a motherfucker. She, she, she uh, comes over. I said, boy. She was just so, she was just funny, even in her honest. <clears throat> So Robert comes over. She's like, Oh, Robert tells us. She freaks out. I'm like, Okay, here we go. She's like, doing this movie, but what? She's for real, for real. Her and Robert improv for about an hour and a half. Wow. Da -da 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 -da. He's like, No. I see it in his eye. He's like, Oh, yeah. I can see what you. Oh, yeah. The next day, he takes her down to the studio and talks to them and they're like, yeah, and then introduces her to Holly Berry and that was a rap every since then. Holly, and, and Holly just took her under her wing and boom and ran and ran with it. They, and that was it. But it, I, it was, she was going to get discovered no matter what. I just was that, that you know, and I didn't do the movie because they had a mummy for her. I was like, well, <laughs> <laughs> you got that. Me. <laughs> that that means that means somebody had heat. <laughs> that's, ladies and gentlemen, that's when you have heat and you can say eh. <laughs> that created some problems too. At, at the parenthood, because I was doing the parenthood, and Robert right, was directing right. the movie. I was like, "Well, oh, nigga, they ain't got no money." I remember <laughs> my my agent said, "Listen, they said they don't have no money." I said, and Robert said, hey, man, quit playing with these people. Just tell me you'll do the movie. I said, okay. So my agent said, what you want to tell them? I said, when they call, tell them you want. Because it was like, they want me to do it for scale or some bullshit. I'm like, not doing that. I'm not the fuck you doing this for scale, nigga. I work with you, nigga. I'm making money. I don't need to do this right. movie. He's like, so, so my agent said, call it again. I said, next time. Because the first, it was like some... $2,500 a week shit or some shit. And I was like, Phew. when they call next time, you tell them you want $500,000. <laughs> Robert was like, motherfucker, what are you doing? Don't be playing with these. These people are serious. I was like, me too. I said, okay, I'm going to stop playing. I'm going to stop playing. I told my agent, he said, what are you going to do? I said, tell them you want $10 million. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, fuck it. Yeah. He's like, he's like, you know, motherfuckers, they'll never give you this. I, said, I know, but I, I just want to hear, hear their face. He wants to tell me, he says, okay, I'm just, okay, fuck, okay, okay. You playing games. And then he went and got AJ Johnson, which was great. They worked out great, you know. Right. They worked out great. But I. Did. But like you said, there are no coincidences. There's no fucking coincidence. This was supposed to happen how it happened. Right. You know what I'm saying? You said that that create was, was it was it tense like because because you were oh, working it was with tense on, I, I had to do a part in the movie because <laughs> Robert was so weird and then something happened on the movie with him and Troy Bear and he was like because me and Robert was tight so he's like yeah I, I was, I'll be like how's the movie going fuck you <laughs> so, <laughs> the producers of the TV show was like Dennis came to me as a face on. Can you just do the movie? Just do something. Just, just do. To tell me you do. Just do something. Because big, right. they wanted big worm in this movie. Right, right. And I was like, so, that, and that was the problem. But they, you know, I was like, come on, man. We had did, you know, New Line had got theirs off with us. So, and you know, rightfully so. But I'm like, come on, nigga, write a check. Right. So I did one little part in it, um, which was in the trailers. They needed some trailer meat, they called it. Like, you know, like, okay, whatever. But yeah, that, that helped a, a lot on the set. Cause yeah, they, they were like, we going to milk <laughs> this one scene. <laughs> <laughs> but Holly Berry, uh, I remember I was on the set. Yeah. Holly, you were saying, I was, yeah. I was, yeah. Holly Berry so cool, and she was. Uh, she took care of Natalie. Um, That's dope. Um, yeah, Natalie, you know, Holly Berry was so cool, you know. 
Well, that's yeah. dope, man. That's yeah, dope. that's dope that you 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 know be. It's dope that you put that you that you were just genuine, right? Because you didn't have to. You could have just watched the 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 um show that she was doing and be like, ah, oh, she's funny and kept it moving. But you actually no man. Showed no. I I really love what we do, and I love watching right. great people like yourself <clears throat> come up. Um, and and no matter what, you're going to do it. Um, but I was just a catalyst for what was supposed to happen. You see what I'm right. saying? She was going to, I was just a tool. You know, right. she was, gonna, and that's, that's only one person. I, I know, I don't even go into people who I know walked on the set and be like, yo, um, shout out to Jesse Collins. Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, you know, when you, you you do something like that, um, only good stuff gonna happen to you anyway, because you do right, it without. Right. You know, you know. It seems like everybody says. Um, uh, somebody said the other day, man, it's always always these uh, people in the reservoirs. They call them reservoirs. Be good. a reservoir, a dam, a reservoir a dam. Whatever the fuck, a reservoir. Contains water. A river flows. Mm -hmm. So if your energy is like a river, it flows, and you're giving, and you nourish. But a reservoir, no, no, no. Right. So well, it's stagnant. It's it's holding back. So you got to figure out what your how your energy is gonna do. Are you gonna right. bless? You know, you know, something wrong with it. Trust me. Right. Yeah. And you, you mentioned Big Worm. Was that did you was that was that something you had to audition for or did was Cube familiar with uh with it wasn't your work wasn't at the, I, I me me and Pooh was talking about this last night. Um I probably the only one that went in there one they knew immediately like, oh no, this is the nigga. Because I came in there in character. That's how I I hate audition. Right. Like, I was like, you know, I was like, even back then, I was like, man, fuck that bullshit. Because it never made sense to me. I'm like, I can't make it up here. So I would have to treat. I remember one time I went, um, I had to play a pimp. And um, <laughs> I, I, I went pimp out. I like, went in there with cocaine and hanging in. <laughs> I had a girl come with me to the I like, bitch sit the fuck down bitch didn't I say shut the fuck up <laughs> reception, the receptionist was like this <laughs> and I was going I wasn't I, I'm not going by phase on I'm going right. the guy's name was Cooley or some shit or some shit he's um <laughs> Cause I had, a, I, I was, I was a pimp. Cause I knew pimps. I was like, I just, uh, bitch, bitch, put, write my name on the motherfucking thing, bitch. Y'all got a year and around here. I got a year. <laughs> and the lady was looking like, <laughs> I, I did that with Rusty Cundiff in his movie call. Um, Fear of a black hat. Yes. Fear of a black hat. So Diesel D. See what the fuck I'm doing. The audition is coming as a rapper. So I come in, and everybody's got their shit. D to D's got a real gun. And I sit there, and I'm listening to everybody talk, and I'm listening to them talk, and I'm rolling a joint. A real joint. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. You were a method. That's cool. 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 And my line was, y'all got a light. <laughs> Is that real? Bitch, you got a light. <laughs> <laughs> so disrespectful. But that it got you get to see. That's the only way I could so called audition is to be But you booked it. Yeah. Okay. So it worked? Oh yeah. I told did you did you book the pimp role? I booked the pimp role, but the project 
um, back then would fall out. Black movies would be would be funded and then fall out. Or more importantly, when you booked it, did they also book the hoe? <laughs> <laughs> You know what's so funny? <laughs> I told her they're gonna put you in this movie now. You gotta do and when I go in there, I'm gonna be stepping up. I don't want you motherfucking uh, my shit. Cause I was talking to her like a pimp. Okay, I'm saying you we, we gonna make this shit, you know what I mean? And we going down, you know, I'm gonna get almost ten toes down, and I'll just motherfucking step, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> don't you don't you embarrass me around these white folks. I want him by some business. <laughs> That's what I told him. <laughs> I said, I'm here about some business. Excuse me? Bitch, tell this bitch what the fuck I said. I ain't gonna be talking to you all night. Where's your urinal? I remember telling her, where's your urinal? Because I wanted to laugh so bad and break down. I was like, where's your urinal? I got a urinal. Urinal? <laughs> urinal. I got a, I got a urinal. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that was the only way I could do a, um, a character. Is audition. Yeah. I can't do you had to go. You were a method, method actor. You had to go in full. Full character. everything. Everything. Yeah, you know what? And you just reminded me because I said I'm going to tell, tell you all when Phase Audit, <laughs> when we met, it was a... Uh, I don't know what the project was, what it was being cast. I remember Aries was there. Aries went in before. It was Robbie Reed was cast. Robbie Reed. Ro I, Aries. It was Robbie Reed. And um, it was at the Ho Hollywood office, wasn't it? It was the Hollywood office, yeah. And I, I know I walked up there. I don't um I forgot what this shit was. I walked in like, ain't nobody auditioned for this shit, or something. Right. I, 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 it was, uh, it was something. What, what, what do you? Me I remember. I remember that. So I remember. I remember Rich probably took me to Baja Fresh the day before, <laughs> and so he took me to Baja Fresh, and, and Q probably wanted to go to Tarong Thai food. So my stomach was bubbling the next day at the audition. So Pete, yeah. Oh my god. So. We have, this is this is my first. Robbie Reed is a big deal to me. Yeah, so I'm like, yo, this is Robbie. She done cast everything, Spike yeah. Lee's joints, everything. Yeah. So I'm like, yo, I gotta be right. And and I think I think this was like either my final season on SNL or the season after I was off SNL. So I'm still feeling confident, but I'm bubbling. <laughs> and everybody that's all everybody's auditioning is is in the waiting room. So I'm like, you know, let me go just step outside and as you step out the door there's some steps that go down the steps. Yep. I knew you you and Rich were cool. Um so I step outside and I let it out. I'm like nobody's out here. Right. And then <laughs> then who walks who walks up? They saw starts walking up the steps. So I'm look, I'm trying to just get the air to this I'm like <laughs> you know try to get the air to spread out a little bit. <laughs> And phase our war, so we make eye contact. He's like, hey, what's up, man? He's like, he's like, hey, did you just fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, God, hey. You gotta go, gotta go. You gotta go right now, son. Shit, gotta go, gotta That's go. how we met. <laughs> That's crazy. Walking up them damn stairs. I remember them damn stairs, too. Wow. Yeah. Wow. What you in a time yeah. machine, man? Are you 19, nigga? You still look 19. The fuck hey, man, I drink, drink a lot of water, baby. What kind of water is that? Water from the guy? What kind of water? Is my, the pH, get, get my alkaline water from, from, the, uh, from the sink. Man. I need that cool shirt. When I'm back on the road, my cool fucking mucking shirts will be with me, man. That's two um, cigarettes. Now, you know what? I, um, I... Cause, cause I don't curse, so it's like I'm a cool for the mucker. Oh, uh, okay, I got you. So Friday hits, man, and that that changes everything for you, right? It does. Like, I'd imagine as far as because now your visibility is a lot higher. Cause, it, cause, cause this is a movie Hollywood didn't didn't expect to really do anything. 
Because y'all made it for what? Three million and it flipped. No, I'm gonna tell you what it was. Theaters, which at the time I was ridiculous. Yes, they talked to DJ Pooh. The initial budget for the the test and stuff we were doing were like two hundred thousand dollars. Wow. And then New Line came and saw the dailies and they were on the floor laughing. And they gave them two point eight million dollars. He said nothing changed. <laughs> <laughs> the food and nothing. <laughs> we were all in um, <laughs> honey wagons and shit. <laughs> like, right. Uh, nothing. Nothing changed. But um, yeah, it was. Um, uh, yeah, two point two point eight million dollars. So um, that's ooh, excuse me. Ooh, that's what I was saying um, with. Um, But you know Hollywood loves who they love, so we were all right. the, the underground, the, the right, the um, you know underdogs, you know, yeah. um, you know, people. Um, me and Godfrey was talking about this about <clears throat> Dave Chappelle. I was like, he's always been their guy. Right, right, right. Always been their guy. Like the um I I always have to preface this and people get Pace people are here. What'd you say about Dave Chappelle? Huh? Right. I think I was there then, trust me. Dave Chappelle is one of the nicest dudes ever. Always been nice. Yeah. But I was saying the preferences Hollywood are always Chris Tucker didn't want to do Friday because he thought Dave Chappelle was going to do it. Like, really? Yes. He was like, at that time, Dave Chappelle had a TV show every, you know, they, they put him in every movie. He said, man, I ain't doing all you're doing to give it to Dave Chappelle on D.L. Hughley. <laughs> and he was really frustrated. So, um, and they were like, nah, we ain't. Um, so, to my point, they gave Ice Cube a budget of 2.8 after filming some of it. Mm -hmm. But they gave Dave Chappelle $8 million to do that that movie. Um, what was it called? It was a movie Robin like... Robin Hood Men in Tights? No. Uh, uh, how High? How High? No. <laughs> no, no. Um, Just, have Baked. Yes. Have Baked. Have Baked. Which was like a Friday ripoff type, you know. So I'm like, you can't really judge your career off of somebody because they have that's some. It's supposed to be like that, but right. everything is as it's supposed to be. Right. So it was like we we're in that clubhouse. And they was well, they what? I was like, no, Dave Chappelle is an anomaly. I mean, they they've always fucked with him, mm -hmm. all from get. I mean, um, you know, because, you know, I was like, that's, you know, look, you know, Chris Rock is a bad Nick. Yeah. You know, they don't, you know, he had to, you know, he had to work for that shit. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm not saying Dave didn't have to work, but, you know. But I, I, I feel, I feel, you know, Hollywood, Hollywood has the, the, their favorites, and and they make their choices, <clears throat> and who they, who the machine wants to get behind, to push out to the uh, out Probably. to the masses. Yes. And, and I know with you know, just as a, as a fan watching watching Chris, when uh when Chrissy didn't pop on SNL. And then he was off, the, and then he went to Living Color. But then Living Color ended. I've, I've heard stories and heard him say that he he went back to basics. He went back to that stage. That the stage, the stage is never going to fail you. Listen, I've seen Chris, the evolution of Chris Rock from the Cadillac right. to that that bigger and blacker, that bigger, the, all the specials like this right. is a beast. Like yeah. a beast. Like yeah. I, I remember watching Chris Rock go like, okay, 
I ain't gonna be that good. And this yeah. nigga telling me, no nigga, get back on stage. Trust me, you can be, you can do that. Right. Like he, he's the one that got me back on stage. Wow. He was like, you just fucking lazy. I was like, hmm? He's sitting by the pool waiting for the, where are all these agents for to call me? <laughs> and he was like, no, nah, nigga, you just lazy. He's like, get out of there. <laughs> Chris Rock can tell you the truth if you if you if, if you if you get him on the sidebar. You know. Chris Chris uh Chris checked me when I was starting to feel myself uh season one on SNL, son. He uh I never forget <laughs> me and Tracy uh go down to the cellar. It's like Patrice, Rich Voss, Billy Burr, everybody's sitting in the back. And uh and Rock walks in, he's like Yo, I never watch us in there. The one time I watch it, they still don't use black people, right? <laughs> so, you know, it's like when you play for the Knicks. Even if even if we suck, we gotta we gotta yeah. celebrate our team. So I'm like, yo, Chris, I don't know, man. Yo, I was I was in two sketches this Saturday, and yo, he broke me down. So he was like, you were in them. <laughs> you were just there. <laughs> that didn't count. You were cop number two. And then for the next 40 <laughs> minutes, he sat face to face. Everybody's listening, but he and I just, he just, he, he spoke and I listened. That's, that's Chris Rock. What I'm going to do? And he was like, yo, he was like, yo, you funny. He was like, he was like, people, he said, don't settle. He said, people that don't have talent yeah. settle and yeah. are happy that's when somebody throws them a scraps. He was like, yo, you're funny. He was like, you're talented. Fight for, fight for what you what you deserve, man. And and then the funniest part was after after this 30, 40 minute uh, talk. Yes. Um, Tracy's sitting there. Tracy's sitting there just listening. He's like, "Yeah, Chris, I've been there five years. You ain't never had this conversation with me. I've been there. You ain't never never offered me any 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 words of wisdom." <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> oh, oh, shit. oh, I remember one night. Me, but he, was, but he was right. He was right, and that that was uh, a lot you know, of that people was a don't want to hear the truth. They want right, to hear right. what makes them, you know. Well, but that truth, listen. He told me I was lazy. Really? And I and you know you want to hear lazy? It's fucking me, man. I get up and I you know, shit. I Google. I talk to. I read scripts. No, nigga, it's about to change. All that shit's mm. about to change. Rock told me that. What the fuck you mean, nigga? You funny, nigga? I know you're funny, man. I know. I've seen you, nigga. I remember we was at uh I had got back on stage and um we was all at Eddie Murphy's house. You know, Eddie talked shit. <laughs> I remember while I'm working out, <laughs> Eddie comes into the main room I'm on, and I'm I'm working my shit out. I'm I'm on my Chris Rock trying to get this shit right. I'm trying to be focused with it, not just be right. talking about motherfuckers. So I'm going through my shit and and I, and I hear Eddie chuckle. I'm like, oh, I got to check out Eddie. That's a big thing. I got to check out Eddie. Okay. So later on, we had Chris at Eddie's house, and we're watching the fight. Eddie comes in. He's, I mean, uh, Chris comes in. He says, nigga, you been on stage? Right? Nigga, you been on stage? I said, yeah, man. Uh, yeah. How's it going? I said, it's good. Eddie saw me. He looks at Eddie goes, yeah, yeah, he was on stage. <laughs> I was like, oh, shit. You motherfucker. He, he was there. He was there. He was there. He was, there. He was on stage. He was there. I mean, you know, <laughs> what he did, I, I don't know what he did, but he was there. I'm just like, this is your friend. This is crazy, man. Damn. Yeah, he... <laughs> <laughs> He's like, yeah. Yeah. you want some to drink? <laughs> <It's me. laughs> but it was honest, right? And that's right. the kind of shit that um, you know, is I I like I you know, 
because you know that that's what it was with Robin Harris. Like, right. Right. <laughs> you know, like you know, um, and Chris Rock. You know, like I say, I remember here hearing um, uh, Chris. <laughs> Uh, you seen his brother, Tony or Jordan? Jordan. Yeah, Jordan. Yo, yeah. Jordan. Uh, listen, I remember when Jordan first started coming to the comic strip. You're like, oh, that's, that's just little, little rock. But then you you were like, okay. I was like, what the fuck? Who the fuck is this nigga? I remember hearing uh, Rock, uh, um, Tony. You know, he was he was in his face. <laughs> he said his favorite comic was Dave Chappelle. I said, "Oh, that's some brother shit right there." <laughs> you gonna knock it off, nigga? <laughs> you sleep, you sleep at the King. You you eat breakfast with the King. No, knock it off, nigga. Knock it the fuck <laughs> off, nigga. <laughs> like, that's one of them brother things. Yeah. I was like, knock it off. <laughs> you know damn well, nigga. It's, it's that Chris Rock, nigga. That's funny. No, nah, but then I've I've seen I've seen I've seen the pride when when Tony is brought up, you know, uh when Tony used to host at uh at the factory and, and Chris was stopping and and then, you know, you say whatever, but then when when, when your brother's that it's dude a little and he's in the house. Like, like yeah, he's like, yo, brother, give like, it up yeah, for my, nigga, do my that brother. Shit. Chris yeah. motherfucking rock, nigga. Yeah. Don't get it twisted, nigga. Exactly. This motherfucking rock. I was like, "Yeah, I like that." Chris, old. And, and Chris is Chris has put on more. Pe you know, the, it's it's funny because in 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 Hollywood, specifically with black comics, mm -hmm. there's always this this sort of uh, yo. Well, how come they ain't putting such and such? Well, I'm like, y'all don't realize how many people you. If you just take everybody Chris ain't going go. Yes. His HBO show, you got like you mentioned earlier, Lance Crowder, Wanda Sykes, yes, uh, Ali CK, Leroy, uh, CK, Louis um, CK, yeah, a lot of people, bro, from yeah. a long time ago. Funny mother, Chuck Slar, yeah. yes, a and lot, a lot of heavy, heavy hitters, man. So it's like uh, they, they don't, see yeah, that. you know, people, yeah, they don't see that. All they see is like, well, I don't see them driving Porsches. Mm -hmm. Right, <laughs> right. They buy What's houses, wrong with the nigga. Prius? They buy houses to take care of their family. Nigga. They don't need to buy exactly. Them. So yeah, trust me. I, I, you know, and you know, people don't with want uh, I'm, I'm about, I'm bouncing around because, like I said, you have a lot of, you got a lot, you know, many people have, have a, a career, mm -hmm. but you have. You have not only hood classics, but you got classics. I mean, Elf was just on four times this weekend. Uh, like, you know, I'm the first black person in a Christmas movie. But besides Franklin from the Peanuts, <laughs> I'm the new you Franklin, know. nigga. <laughs> it was it's you, <laughs> it's you, and this dude. We, on. <laughs> That should be a funny the, the 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 evolution of black people in Christmas movies starts with Franklin and then me. And that's it. <laughs> then, then Chris Brown. <laughs> Chris Brown and Loretta Devine. Lord, this Christmas, I hope we have enough greens. <laughs> oh my God. And, uh, yeah. But that's real, man, and, which is tragic, because because I don't think people don't realize. And I and I was gonna bring this up, you know, the poster for um, couples retreat. Wait, did it just freeze? Did it just freeze? I I see phase on, and I see a circle on his head. Can y'all hear me? I don't know if y'all can hear me. Y'all let me know. Faison left. I guess he's going to come. They need another almost Christmas. I think Faison signal uh, his Wi-Fi froze up. But he'll be back in shortly. Oh, shucks. Yeah, I know, blood. 5620. He'll be back. 
he'll be back. I don't know where he went. Um, probably just just moved to a different area in the house. So, um, so yeah. are y'all are you all enjoying our conversation? Uh, y'all y'all can hear me. Can y'all see me? It's cool. Y'all can't see me. Okay. Look, he ran out of minutes. Y'all stupid. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> Y'all can't see me. Okay. Who's in the motherfucking house? Faison. Uh, me. What if, hey, what if Faison just bounced? What if Faison was like, all right, that's enough. <laughs> Faison will be back in, man. He w he will be back. We can still hear and see you. Well, listen, I thank y'all. I, I thank y'all for uh for sticking around and uh and enjoying the show. Don't know why I'm in Eddie Murphy, but I think because he just said that Eddie threw him under the bus, under under the proverbial bus, and I just went from Eddie to donkey. I have no idea why. <laughs> he had to take it that Corona kick back in. <laughs> That would be hilarious if Faze I came back on with a sandwich like Yes, I know what we was talking about. Sing a song. Sing a song. What movie? Um, hey, what are y'all watching on Netflix? Like, how many of y'all is sick of Christmas movies on Hallmark and Lifetime? Because I'm done. I'm tired of them, yet I still find myself watching them. I just started watching. You know what's um you know what's terrible? Everything on Netflix with Bruce Willis. That's right. I said it. <laughs> I can't Yo, Bruce Willis has 15 movies that just dropped in the last six months, and they're all on Netflix and the Amazon Prime. And they all they got boring movies on Netflix. Yeah, they got a lot. Of, they got a, you know what Netflix has turned into? The Mandalorian is dope. Um, don't give anything away because I'm I'm behind because I'm letting them all stack up so that I could binge, binge and watch. Hey Hugh, if you on here, text phase out and tell him to to charge his phone. So <laughs> that might have been it, you know. Um may, maybe that was uh the end. The Night Watch. Bruce Willis, does he die in all of them? We need a black version of National Lampoon Christmas Vacation. You know, we just need um, our own movies. I don't even like, I'm not a fan of saying we need a black version of this. I'm just like our, our own versions of, of, of dope movies. The Crown is amazing. My wife loves The Crown. I'm going to make it to it. British Baking Show, The Exodus Edition, uh, watching The Expanse. I started watching The Expanse on Prime, but I got, you know what? Here's the problem. You can't watch a bunch of those shows and, and uh, play on your phone at the same time because you've lost focus. <laughs> Um, ask him about Vlad interviews. I, I don't want to talk real talk. I don't want to talk about that dude. I'm not a fan of that dude. Um, uh, Godfrey and I have spoken about that. Godfrey actually put me up on Vlad and was trying. He he put me in contact with Vlad's people, and I just I never I never was feeling the guy. You know, something about how do you feel about our two legends, Debo and Natalie B. Honestly, it's 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 sad for um it's sad for anybody to to lose someone. That's why I, I as I said um when talking to Faison, I felt bad um because these are two dimensional characters to us that are bigger than life. But as he just expressed, these are his friends. You know, these are people that we don't we just know the characters. You know, Faison and others. Um, know the actual people. I saw Angela Means, who 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 we had mentioned, the talented uh sister, actress, uh comedian, and she posted something on her page after uh after Tiny uh Tiny Lister passed away, because you didn't you don't get to see we only see the characters and Craig one you know you see you see this menacing character. I remember him as Zeus when he was uh wrestling with 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 Hulk Hogan. You know, and, and uh, on the first episode of uh, Robert Townsend and his partners in crimes, I miss you, Rob. I really miss you. I'm sorry that I just did that. Um, but it's it's not me. It's the spirit. Um, as as it took me, like like as as Faison says, sometimes you know, it's it's what's meant to be is meant to be. And my eye just went like that, not because I planned it, but just because that's how this that's how the spirit moved me. 
He seemed he did seem like a nice dude too, man. He seemed like a real nice uh I always loved love like Godfrey's in my area. He was on both he was both Will Smith and Martin Lawrence show. Yeah, that's uh yo, that's uh I'm gonna do the I'm gonna do the rest of if Faison comes back on, I'm gonna uh <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna do the rest of this in uh in Will Smith's voice, man. Did y'all see the Fresh Prince reunion? Fresh Prince reunion was was uh was kind of dope. It was uh, but did y'all peep that Alfonso Ribeiro didn't um Alfonso Ribeiro didn't didn't break bread with 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 dark skin uh, Aunt Viv? Did y'all catch that? I did. We did in this household. <laughs> Roy said, "Yeah, it was dope. It was dope." But uh, uh damn, you missed it, man. Borrow somebody's uh HBO Max um code. It's, it's it's definitely worth worth it and entertaining. Uh, I honestly don't know if 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 Faison is coming back, and if that's the case, I I get get to sleep a little earlier than uh than uh than expected. Huh, how about that? <laughs> get to bed a wee bit earlier than we had planned to. Also, you know, uh, let me let y'all know while I have y'all attention, um, we have some great guests coming up. Uh, because he, he think cloud, he white, so sad. <laughs> what? What? Um, we out of, uh, at the end of the month, um, canceled HBO Max as soon as I watched it. That's, that's gully. Cause that's, I know, I know how that goes. Um, we have my man earthquake two weeks from today. We have a man earthquake on, uh, on December 28th. Um, will be on with me on Monday, December 28th. And then um, I think January, actually we're doing a Sunday. We're doing a special Sunday episode, the first Sunday in January, January 3rd, instead of January 4th, which is the Monday, which I normally do. Um, you brought the positive out of Faison. Oh man, well, I appreciate that. Hey man, I mean, hey, I, I, People miss. I think people have have Faison mis misunderstood. Man, he's a, he's a good dude, good dude, good brother, intelligent brother. Um, you know, people sometimes have to have to see multiple sides of individuals. And I know with with uh, with certain interviews and certain platforms, um, people are looking to draw out conflict. So make sure Sunday, January third, you catch. We have my girl uh, um, Gina Yashere, very funny and talented uh, comedian slash writer. Adam Sachs, I see you, fam. What up, big? Um, happy holidays to you and the family. Um, yeah, so make sure you uh, check me and Gina Yashere out on Sunday, January 3rd. And then the following week on, uh, I believe that'll be January 11th, got my man Roy Wood Jr. from The Daily Show. Um, and, and multiple Comedy Central specials that will be back. We'll return back to our normal uh, normal time and date on Monday, January eleventh. Uh, I right. uh, so yeah, you know what? Yeah, his stories his stories were mad funny. UK in the building. All right, y'all. Well, listen. I think I think Faison tapped out. I'm gonna call him afterwards. Just so I always I always thank my people. And call him and and for I know some people have mentioned uh somebody said loose Roy Wood. Loose, what do you mean loose Roy Wood? Um Earthquake Gene and yeah, yeah, I've definitely been pronouncing Yashere wrong this whole time. Well that's that's what I'm here for. What were you saying? Yashir? Yes Gina is Gina Yashir. <laughs> Gina Yashir. Um Gina Yashere. Um and check out her show. Um, I've been looking forward to having her on for, for a couple of months because the story of how um, she she became a co-creator on the show I Heart Abishola on, on CBS is pretty amazing. I think y'all yeah, will enjoy that. And uh, and Roy and I will we'll talk about it. I just saw Roy's, uh, Roy's appearance on Showtime at the Apollo and sent him a screenshot of it. And he texted me back immediately. He was like, Nero, where did you find that? <laughs> that need to be on Aries podcast. Hey, Aries got to invite me. Uh, it's his show, not mine. Um, but I love to. Oh, there he goes. Look, see, look at y'all. Y'all didn't think he was coming back. And he's right there. See, see, I told y'all, I told y'all 
things that will be right back, and y'all had no idea. Stop being doubters. Believe in somebody. There it is. <laughs> What's up, son? Man, my battery went out, man. <laughs> I was like, oh, shit. If you can see the battery, I'm like, it's got plenty of time. It's Yo, they were good. Somebody said your Boost Mobile ran out. Your minutes ran out. Yeah, okay. <laughs> it, it, it's not really... <laughs> That's funny, though. It was. It was. <laughs> it was. I was. I was. Look, I was stolen because I was like, true. Maybe. Maybe you're sleepy. <laughs> and then it... <laughs> no, well, people man. had good things to say about you, man. Everybody was like, "Yo, man, it's, it's great seeing." Seeing this other side of phase on it, and I explained to them, I said, Y'all only, if you see, you don't judge someone based on what they see just on one platform. People, listen, <laughs> I'm <Yeah>. old. Right. <laughs> so, you're wiser. I see things differently than a lot right. of these people on, you know, because I've been there and I've been. Certain places they probably have not been, and, you know, right, right. and, I, and, and, I'm, and I'm, I'm not talking about to France. I'm talking about the the, the dark corners of the world, right. and you know, great places. I've, I've seen both, so right. I've, I've I've been blessed to see all kind of shit. You know, the like, peaks and valleys. It's like yo, you know, whoa, you know, damn, <laughs> you know. Right. Um, Especially as a black person, you have to be schizophrenic. You have to live on both sides. Yeah, yeah. There's a you dichotomy to, we, we we got to carry around. Wear two masks. I, I always thought that um, I was going to I call myself going to write this book called The Invisible Man, and I was like, then I right, find out there's was, a book called Invisible Man already about the same thing I was going to write about. I never <laughs> knew. It. <laughs> I was like, that's what we are. And, right. And these and these. The society we're considered invisible, mm -hmm. even though we're the present and creating a lot of shit around you. I mean, the culture, the music, how we view things, um, but we're still considered invisible. Right. You know what I'm saying? Which is um, deep as fuck. Like, yeah. But when the invisible man started making noise, this nigga crazy. Right. Yeah. That's the that's the opinion. <laughs> before before we cut off, I was I was uh, I started mentioning um the the situation with couples retreat and and as as you're speaking about the invisible man, that's uh you know it's you have a legitimate gripe and and. Before before we go into it, to explain to people, people have to understand when you know when you when you're uh, black in America or just black in the world, mm -hmm. you're always aware of when you're absent um, and you don't and there's no representation. You know, when mm -hmm. I was a kid, I, I remember watching TV shows, whether it was Little House on the Prairie or Happy Days, and be like. Where, where, where are we? <laughs> like, you know, like, yeah, yeah, we, yeah. we don't live in Milwaukee. You don't know, you, you remember what you call it on uh, Little House in the Prairie? goes, I don't want to be a nigga no more. <laughs> was it Joe? It was, um, um, oh, my God. I am, I, what is wrong with my brain? Um, Todd Bridges. Todd Bridges. Yes. I don't, don't want to be a nigga no more. <laughs> I was like, damn, that's what was happening. Wait, man. Like, uh, wow. So Frank, you started off like, but we got somebody on the show. Oh, damn. Man. I don't want to be nigga no more. Who the fuck said you had to be? Like the, the, I always went into a comedy about them shooting a slave movie because 
white actors get to say nigga and they get to say it over and over profusely. <laughs> okay, from the top, please. I don't want no nigga. I didn't like the way I said nigga. Then. Let me go. Push it. I'm a, I don't want no nigga. Ah! Cut. I need more. I need more feeling. I, I need, need more feeling. I need, I, I, can I hold the whip? Can I hold the whip? I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna whip him first, and then I'm gonna say it. Okay. Action. <laughs> These damn niggas. Ah. How do you feel about that? <laughs> oh my. <laughs> do you know what goes on? <laughs> Them going over their lines. Um. Let's go real. You guys want to run lines? Sure. It's like the the one brother was says like, I'm I'm good. <laughs> I don't want to run lines. Like, no, I, run. Just, I I need to find my motivation and I gotta find my racial, you know, because this is hard. <laughs> I've never heard one white actor go, I don't want to say this. <laughs> <laughs> Who the fuck? Is it something else that I can say angrily? <laughs> Look what what can we go with the TV edits? No, there are none. No, Wait, but we're no. editing. We're yeah. editing the word. Would, you know, so funny when they say nigger, they keep nigger in there, but they bleep right. everything. <laughs> you <laughs> mother nigger, <laughs> jazz. <laughs> those those movies with Richard Pryor where he be cussing. You get your fish face, nigger. <laughs> I'm like, they keep everything. But nigga be nigger's cool. You can say nigger. It's okay, right? right? Yeah. Nigger face. Dave Chappelle said that shit. That shit was great. That was one of the most brilliant things. He's, I was like, that was great. How you can say um, the f tag or whatever, but you can say nigger. He's like, but <laughs> he said, thanks for not gay. He's like, and I'm not nigger. <laughs> that shit. Right. Was, that shit was cold. I was like, ooh, yeah. That nigga hit a mark. Yeah, that shit was yeah. brilliant. Um, yeah, that was that was real funny. But with, with that Fox. with that with couples retreat, which was a great movie. Listen, it's hard to you know what it's like. It's like being on tour with a band, and you're going around with this band, and you get to this one hotel, and they go, "You got to go around back to get in." Right. You got to you got to you got to go around back to get in. I see you. I see you inside. Where y'all going? We're going around front. All right. see you, you guys, you know, you know your place. Go around back. Right. And Faison, um, explain to the people that don't know what what your what your gripe is with with a. Uh... Well, we did the film, and um, when it came to advertising, um, they had us on. We put all all of the couples on the poster that was in the movie. Everybody's in the movie except for Tasha Smith, but she wasn't my, you know, she was my wife in a right in right. Trudy. So we're all on the cover, but then when they wanted to release it to um, overseas, they took us off the cover, you off and the Kelly. poster, yeah, off the poster, as if like say, yeah, we don't want to go around the back. Right. We're at the hotel. You now you have to go around the back. Right. See, the difference with that was they tried to do that to Sammy Davidson and, and Frank Sinatra said, Sinatra, yeah. fuck that. We all go to the front. Or we ain't right. coming to this motherfucker. Right. So it takes somebody to stand up to it. So I'm that being Frank Sinatra. Fuck that. Right. We all... He, he, like, why do you give a fuck about these countries that don't want black people on the fucking cover? We're in the movie, motherfucker. Right. So you, you, you're you going to abide down? You you want that dollar from them that much that you take us off the cover? Or is it? Or is that just the excuse you're using? Because we're everywhere. Black culture is everywhere. Right. Everywhere. You go overseas, they know. Oh, that's straight. Hello, big one. They know. Right. Mr. Love, hello, Mr. Love. So is that just the fucking excuse they use? They don't know you blacks. Right? Right. So 
they did it to um, John Boyega. Um, I, I know I'm saying his name fucked up. No, you said it pretty close, Boyega. Boyega. Yeah, Boyega. Okay. And he's such a I, I, he's such a brilliant young actor. And, yeah, he's um, dope. I was like, they took him off the because I was happy to see a black, you know, guy in Star Wars. Right. And it was a joke with, without a pun. <laughs> Y'all love Billy D with the perm. We love Billy D. With but the he perm. had a perm. But he, he had, had a, a perm. Conk. He yeah. had a feathered perm. Like, yes, where he are did. those goddamn stormtroopers? <laughs> 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 he had a cape and a perm. He, he, had a a... he was a space pimp. <laughs> damn dog Vader, you. All he was missing was his pinky in the air the whole time. He was cold. Yeah, uh, what's up, Princess Leia? Yeah. What, what it do, boo? He actually did. He was like, mine, mine. mine. He, he, he was. You truly <laughs> belong up here in the stars with us. Yeah. I was like, Billy, Billy D trying to move on his solo's girl. He, 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 he was like, don't fold it fast. <laughs> <laughs> so, George Lucas has made sure that black people always in Star Wars. Right. He did his part. But for them to take John Boyega off the poster is like it was a direct response of me not stepping up for a couple of people. Wow. Because if I would have made noise back then, like, what the fuck y'all doing? You know, um, it would have been we would have been already into it. They would have been scared about it. Right. You know, um, the one studio that is very aware of it, so funny, is Sony. Mm-hmm. Sony has a whole division. Like, hey, you know, don't do that. Right. Uh, don't don't you do that. But um, all the rest of my it's standard operation. Don't put no niggas on the poster across seas. Unless they, you know, the if you look at the um, tenant poster, it's a white girl up across the the um, the, uh, does it, um John uh, John yeah John, John, John Wise, yeah, uh, yeah and um, twelve years a slave poster was Brad Pitt was <laughs> was Brad Pitt. <laughs> uh, Something's missing. Slavery, will we? Yeah. <laughs> They'll get it. They'll get it. They'll get it. So it's like I'm. I'm. I'm saying, if we all Americans, why are you so quick to throw us under the bus? Make us go around the back right. to get. Um, into the same hotel, right? right. So Especially like, when you're in T, you're an integral part. It's not like you're you're on equal billing with with that, and that's the problem. You, you can't yeah, with Favreau and Vince Vaughn. Yeah, and you can't just take Peyton. the nigga off. Like, uh, do, we you negotiate for that shit, right? And for them to go, what in in the studio would be like, <sighs> what the hell? What's my fake one? Because they passed the buck. Right. Who, did, who the hell did this? <laughs> like it's a mistake. Right. I don't know what happened. Maybe I, I think we ran out of um, black ink or something. Right. I don't know <laughs> what the hell crazy. <laughs> <thing. laughs> so you know, have you now, have you have you faced or felt pushback from it from from any the industry at all? Actually, no. Actually. I I'm surprised. I was just like I knew I was gonna be blackballed. Like whatever, I don't give a fuck. You know, right. It needs to happen. Fuck them. Right. But um, a lot of support. I mean, people aren't coming forward and telling their stories, or because you know somebody's got to somebody's got to jump and be the <laughs> right. be that guy first. Right. You know, so I wait till the smoke cleared and then I say something. Right. You know, <laughs> right. <laughs> but but right now it's um it, 
<laughs> is it okay to say something? You know, so, I mean, I guess, you know, people are scared of their livelihoods. And, right. You know. Well, especially during, I mean, because things have slowed, things slowed down for a spell. I mean, it's, it seems it's, like things have picked back up to some extent. Um, things are in production, not the way they normally would be. It's a whole new world. Right, right. It's have you whole... have you been uh you've been gigging? Have you been on the road since? Uh... I did two shows. I did one in, in always from my favorite cities in uh, uh, Arlington, Dallas, which is dope as fuck. Improv. Or Dallas Improvs. Yeah. Houston Improv. Or oh, those are just and um Atlanta comedy um um theater. Good comedy theater? Yes. And you know, great shows, you know. A little rusty. We all are, yeah. A little rusty, but the audience is so happy to be <laughs> Right, right. <laughs> you know, say it again. Like <laughs> time to go home. Right. <laughs> So, um, yeah, but uh, I don't know how, where, like, I was getting ready to do it. Um, I hate saying the special, but, you know, the special that I was creating to do was, is a special special. Like, I can't even just, I can only sh show, and, and then all this shit happened. That's what we were shooting. Um, oh. We were getting ready to shoot. That's why I was going around doing all this shit to get ready for it. Right, right. And, um, But now you have uh, uh oh, did did the battery go out? Oh, okay. <laughs> you touch something on these phones, and you're yeah. in another room. <laughs> so you were preparing to shoot, and I like how you said that. It sounds like you were preparing to shoot a a special because um, and I've said it before, just because you shoot an hour doesn't make it special, <laughs> you know. Yeah, no, this is it's a lot. It's a lot of comedy regulars. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they um, <laughs> um, and you know, you listen. They're shooting so many of them. Um, yeah. um, put it like this: Eddie Murphy has two. Richard Pryor has three. So, and that's like flawless, 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 right. flawless, flawless. On Richard Pryor's second one, he bombed so bad the first one. And it was so funny, Eddie Murphy did too. They were filming um, Raw and he bombed the first show so bad. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Richard Pryor. Yeah. yeah. A bomb, this bomb. So they had to use everything from the first show. Mm -hmm. It's slimming. Um, Richard Pryor, the same way. He went out to do his um, for, second for sunset, show. live on the sunset. Yeah, live the first show. Then he came out. He, he just he was he did like ten twenty minutes and said, "I'm sorry, y'all." <laughs> yeah, Mooney <laughs> ran on stage and gave him whispered in his ear something. Yeah. And then yeah. he came back the next day, and all oh, hell yeah, broke loose. Yeah. It was Richard yeah. Pryor. Yeah. And you ever walk down the street? Yeah, yeah. It was like in that, in that, you know, whoever tells that story, that's the part I don't want to hear nobody do Richard Pryor tell his jokes. I just want to see him, right. his thoughts in between the stage. Yeah, that's the story of Richard Pryor. I think not. Somebody going, you know, with a bad wig, going, yeah, we yeah, we get, no. <laughs> I want to know. Peace, <laughs> Ali Sadiq. I see you, fam. Oh, where's Ali Sadiq? <laughs> he just he just popped on. But you're right, and and just because someone was, I saw someone said Richard had more than three. He he had live in concert, um, mm -hmm. filmed in Long Beach. He had yep. live on the Sunset Strip, and then he had here and now in New Orleans. He also did that. No, he live and smoking. No, nope, which that was to me done. isn't a special. That's no. that's him working on a special. Somebody had a camera. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There was a, no. There was not a special. That was yeah. Someone had no. A camera and filmed him at the New York Improv. 
in the improv, yeah. And then and faded to black, and all you heard was, this didn't go the way we thought it was going to go. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> saying, we can still sell it. No. That's, that was him putting together his shit. Wait till he blows up, then release it. So that's no, he had three. And but I, Bill, I agree. I, I, I'm, Bill Cosby I'm not necessarily says, a fan of, of, of one special a year um, that's become somewhat normal because I, I think it takes time to build a build an yeah. actual special. Uh, yeah, you you yeah, it's 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 really your um it's your soul. Yeah. That you're if you're gonna do it it's your soul you're you're doing. Um um I hear everybody was um, fucking with Kevin, I was like, man, listen, as an artist, he's got to get that nut out. Right, right, right. He's got to get that nut out. I mean, and everybody's not, it's art, everybody's not going to like it, especially when you do it, it's, it's art. So right. it's art. So it's like, you know, he got to get that nut out. And then it's like, okay, it's like, imagine having to go into a, um, an art museum going, fuck this, man. Picasso ain't shit, man. Look at his ear. Right. Motherfucking punk ass Picasso, this bullshit. Basquiat with this motherfucker. Fuck Basquiat, nigga. <laughs> it's the same thing. It's like, right, it's, right, it's art. right. So, and, and it's just their strokes. They, they can stroke any way they can. It's like, right. Um, but nowadays, you see so many. Um, um, you know, I was I was listening to um, what's her name? Um, Sam Sam J. Sam J. <sighs> funny as a mother. Yeah, Sam J. is funny. I was like, I mean, I've never heard of her, and, and, I, and to stumble on funny mother like that is, you know, I was like, wow. Like I never seen Joe Rogan. This motherfucker had me bent over. <laughs> if his son had to fuck somebody to be Batman. <laughs> like, go fuck that person, son. <laughs> go fuck some old girl. You wanna be you gonna be Batman, right? <laughs> she was just it's just brilliant. So it's like But you know what? If it's funny, and th and that's the thing, because you know, I, th I think someone just said specials aren't aren't special anymore. A real special is special. You it know? is. You, but here's the thing: you know the difference between a comedy regular and a comedy special. You can look at somebody's, uh, someone's whether it's a half hour, whether it's an hour. Yeah. You can look at what they present and say, "Nah, they put work into that. They, that, this was, in they didn't. They didn't form that in." It's flawless. Yeah, yeah. Cause cause as as a creative, to me, I know I see something good when I leave inspired and say to myself, Yo, I gotta I gotta work. I gotta I gotta write. I gotta write. I gotta work. If I just leave to oh, the taco shop close. <laughs> right, right, right. I didn't see shit. You gotta, so, you gotta, you gotta step up your game, man. But well, yeah. listen, man, because I know it's getting late. Um, yes, Ali Sadiq, your all your specials are special, fam. Fucking Ali is hilarious. Nigga was, Ali is funny, man. This nigga the back shit boots. Ali, <laughs> stop punking him, cotton. He was fucking with. He was fucking with Drew. Drew's out. <laughs> Oh, he was, we was in a room and he was fucking with Drew. <laughs> oh, that shit was hilarious. Drew Tilman, my guy. You know, he, people don't know Drew know how to fight. I'm like, Drew, fight. I mean, I know he looks small, but he, we raised that nigga right. Um, but he was fucking with Drew. And he, <laughs> Drew was like, come on, man. You know, I love you, Ali. <laughs> Ali is a, he's hilarious, man. This nigga Ali was funny. He would, um, Salute. he would, um, uh, I think he was hosting or open for me or whatever in Houston. And then so I'll be right back. He'd go across town. It'd be a pack house or someplace he was doing. Or it was another night. It'd be a pack house. And I was like, nigga, what the fuck you doing? Just do this. 
but he's yeah, he was um yeah, funny motherfucker. Funny, funny dude, funny dude, and you're a funny dude, man. And thanks for thanks for uh hanging out with me, you know, and just catching up. I yes, I started sir. doing this just cause cause I miss y'all, I miss us all, you know, I miss what we do and seeing everybody. Yeah, man, it's this is the new norm now, man. This is yeah. we, we broadcast, you know. This is it. This is like, this is it. Well, shoot, the home is the studio, you know. It's, it's, <laughs> right. Oh yeah! Congrats on on the platinum. Uh, you got your platinum. <laughs> the platinum on the corner over there. The platinum way over there. That's what we call it. <laughs> the platinum. Yeah. You got the got platinum. Flat, son. Uh, DJ. You know what I'm saying? You know what? You know. Yeah. You know. I don't, you know, I don't want to talk about no it. No doubt. Yeah. I, look, I'm 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 sea walking for you, son. <laughs> <laughs> you are crazy, man. <laughs> Listen. Yo, Faison, man. Um, what, before I go, give me give me one one misconception about you that that you you would want people want to clear people's minds on. I get. <laughs> I wish I could text you uh, something from um, one of my home. Eric Hill, my homeboy. Uh, he said, "Man, I keep hearing this shit, Faison hate." These motherfuckers hate the truth. It can't be you hate when it's when it's real. Right. And I was like, I just started laughing because it's like, you know, people I grew up that know me and be like, Yeah, I ain't got no hate in my heart, nigga. It's just that's the way I see shit. But these right. younger kids, if you don't if you're not a robot and you fall in line with what they're doing, you must like them. You must, you must, we like them. You should like right. them. So you're a hater, like no motherfucker, I just got different tastes. Right, different opinion. Say, yeah, it's like, um, and most of my my opinion is based on fact. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm not going to say something. I, I might get a date wrong or something like that, but I might like, no motherfucker, I was there. Some shit I don't know. I don't, I don't know about that shit. You asked right. me about some hockey. <laughs> I don't know. Right. You know, the certain baseballs, you know, I don't know. Basketball, I don't know. But certain shit we know about. Um, yeah, Q. <laughs> um, you know, especially when it comes to uh, the so called um, gang life, uh, I know about it. But you know, nobody you know, people don't know. They don't because they don't know me, but people in my neighborhood go, yo. That's slabber. Slabber. <laughs> uh so or just my you know, like I said, um the Saison hate shit is is corny. Right. To me. It's like, um, first of all, I'm a grown man, I got my own opinion. And second of all, uh you will you, I remember talking to Vlad, and um, he's saying that he's gonna uh, for the Mike Tyson fight. Mike, no, Mike Tyson is not knocking out Roy. I'm like, matter of fact, Roy might win. Um, they're looking for a rematch. It's not about Mike Tyson has figured out a way to get rich in in WWE the system. Right, it's very smart what he's doing. Yeah, yeah. I and mean, it, it looks like a fight. It sounds like because you say, "Oh, Mike Tyson, Roy Jones, the fuck out of here." I said, "No, he's not." He says, "Um, um, no one's gonna win that fight." I, uh, I damn near called it, and that's what happened. Right, the draw, which is the only way that fight could end up, is a draw. Right, or. Right. <laughs> or um, Mike Mike Tyson on the floor and, and Roy over and over. I, it's it's the Bootney D Fonsworth. I won. <laughs> I'm the champ. <laughs> I, I'm the champ. I am the champ. <laughs> I am the champ. I am the champ. That's right. That's right. I'm the champ. <laughs> 
<laughs> but he was too young to understand what's happening. Go watch Let's Do It Again. Classic. Yeah. Booty Lee Funnel and 40th Street Black. 40th Street Black. That's what that fight was to me. Booty Lee yeah. Funnel and 40th Street Black. So where's all the money going to be? Right! 40th Street Black. We can see it. We can see it. <laughs> we find them and we, we kill them. <laughs> John Amos is cold. Yeah. Oh, John Amos. John oh, Amos is cold. That music. But it has, there we go. Fucking awesome. Kansas you know, City Mac. Mac. Kansas, Kansas City, City Mac. Mac. You think I work for that job, time sucker? Will you tell this child to take, it, take that gun in my... I think I think you need to make... Let me make a call to Kansas. Denise Nichols. Denise what? Nichols. What? Denise Nichols is falling. And still. Yeah. That was, oh, my God. So, yeah. Faze on hate, man. I mean, you know, I hear it. It's just, it just sounds so corny. It's just, you know. Right, right. I really well, the things I hate to to the the uninformed is just just a, a man's opinion. You know, I I see it as as I I never liked the term hate because I think in the late '90s when the term hating and player hating became popular, to me that just that just gave people that were mediocre a way around their mediocrity, and yes. they could then justify their mediocrity with you saying, You're "Absolutely right." Well, I'm not feeling it. Yeah, you're absolutely right because it's a it's a it's a Bay Area term. Number one, mm -hmm. it's from pimps used to say. It. Right, I was thinking, play hate hate on a player, nigga. Right. Play hate, hate on a player. It's always mother hate on a pimp, nigga. It's right. a Bay Area term. Right, and pimps used to use. It. Then you write somebody say, "Oh, this nigga's just that player hater." No, nigga, I just hate Joe shit. Your shit right. sucks to me. <laughs> no, you're just whack. Yes. <laughs> no, no, I'm not. No, no, I'm not hating. You you're so whack. You're just whack. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. There's a difference. There's a difference. I don't sleep and wake up thinking about you. <laughs> right, right. I don't give you enough power <laughs> right. over my life to actually <laughs> hate you, but right. I will say you suck. Right. I see sucker shit, and I say, hey, that's sucker shit. And I move on. And I move on. <laughs> I digress. <laughs> Yo, Faison, man, much love, brother. I appreciate you hanging out with me tonight, fam. All love, brother. Keep doing what you're doing, man. You likewise, doing likewise. Paper. Stay safe. Um, much love to that little little baby you got, man. Uh, keep, keep shining. I'll oh, see yeah. you soon when this is all over. Stay healthy. All right, baby. I be happy holidays. Peace. How you uh there we go. All right, y'all. Look, we went two hours. It's been a it's been a couple months since we did two hours. I hope y'all enjoyed it. If you didn't follow me before, follow me now. And uh make sure, make sure you uh hang out with us every Monday night for the market protocol, Monday night is live, eight PM Pacific, eleven PM Eastern. And uh, I don't hate you. I hate that way. <laughs> That's funny. And uh, as your man, Dean Edwards, we'll catch you uh, next week. And like I said, over the next couple of weeks, we have my man, uh, Earthquake, on the 28th. Gina Yashere on January 3rd. We're doing a Sunday night. And then uh, back to Monday the 11th, my man, Roy Wood Jr., and uh, and I'm waiting to hear back for next next Monday, which is why I'm not giving you the name just yet. But it's going to be dope. And and for anyone that uh, is new to this, um, if you want to catch previous episodes, um, they're all on my page. Everybody from uh, from last week, we had Sebastian Metascalco. Uh, week before, uh, Angela Johnson. We have, have Atheon Crockett, Ari Spears, Jay Farrell, Daryl Hammond, um, Godfrey, Yamanika Saunders, Marina Franklin. We just had, had some great, great uh, comedic talent, talent, Jim Gaffigan. The list goes on. This was our 35th episode, and uh, we going strong. We going strong. So y'all stay up. It's your man, Dean Edwards. Y'all catch y'all. Y'all stay, stay uh, safe out there. I all love two fingers. I just gave you four. <laughs>